welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're a fine silk sourced from the most pampered of silkworms and woven by artisans upon a golden loom. A silk with the texture of butter, a texture that makes you think, this would make for some really nice pyjamas. And ta-da! Here are some pyjamas I prepared earlier. Mmm, kismet. Now, I can't promise you much with these weekly lingeries, but I can promise you this. I won't keep you long. A promise like that deserves a follow, don't you think? Tap that follow button. Every time you do, a writer somewhere gets their wings like full-on gossamer. Today's missive was inspired by a worm, or multiple worms actually, but let's just keep it singular to tell this story. A frozen nematode dug out of the Siberian permafrost after 46,000 years on ice and defrosted in a dish, woken up most rudely. Do you like people watching you sleep? Watching you sleep and then, you know, waking you up from your peaceful slumber, which in this case was 46,000 long years of it. Me neither. But the scientists that dug these little fellas out of a fossilised gopher hole added some water to old snoozy Encino worm and guess what? It got all spicy in its outlook, woke up and showed everyone its reanimated wriggle. Exciting, no? The planet is melting and the worms are coming out like nothing ever happened. 46,000 years, guys. You know what else was around 46,000 years ago? Mammoths. That's just an aside. I'll link to the story in the description, like I always do. But as you can tell, this little act of waking up inspired me. It really did. Because when you think about it, we're all worms, frozen and putting our lives on ice until we die. Jeez, morbid much, Janine? Lighten up! Actually, don't lighten up. Wake up! All life is winter, with some seasons mixed in. Wake up! Basic premise, don't put yourself on ice. Wake up and get to work. Without any further wriggling, here is the post. We are simple worms yearning to melt our permafrost. This is a call. A call to arms, to legs, to bodies, to minds, to that soft part behind the knee that never gets any love unless it's bitten by a mosquito. A call to humans and persons and peoples and you theirs. All of yous. All quadrupeds and skin cylinders. And let's add in nematodes, for who amongst us has not felt, at one time or another, like a worm? Wake up! There is no time. We're not having it, and you're not getting it. For your big and selfish sleep. No time to tolerate your frozen and inert body, stuck as it is in the permafrost of an ever-tilting, off-its-axis world. No time for shutting down to the chaos of the outside and marinating in your pre-programmed stasis with the black oils and flecks of who's a what's it's on your conscience. In and on an unknown, long forgotten and foreign tundra. No time. Waking up, it's the only solution. The waking up and the slipping in and the taking off in the now time. Put your finger on it. Only that time. The forever in it time, which is yours to idolise, to monetize, to watch your sides and take your rides. This is the this. Get to the getting. Wake up! Open your drowsy eyes and feel the surge of life as it investigates your bones and seeps into the bloodstream, which, in turn, animates your vision. You are the slowly blinking tube of light, flashing faster to full on, bright and strong on the ceiling of this here moment. You are the new arrival from the stepped away momentarily, the coming back of you. Your slender form will find its sugar to feast and thrive upon one year, five years, 46,000 years in the permafrost of putting off. That's all over now. Time to put on. Wake up! Time and history and life go on. Tumbling rocks clean sands your presence, your voice and your glorious struggle. Unless... Wake to engage... Wake to get shiny. Wake to wriggle your fingers in front of your face and say clearly, loudly, and with purpose, with these hands, I thee make. And go and do and have and want and be. All of it. Wake it up. Wake up whatever it is that has frozen itself into that hard lump inside your body, hard and cold and heavy and still, the dead inside of you. A heart, a belly, a knot just under the skin. The long-lost hope of that wisp of perhaps put on a shelf and forgotten. 
lay your hand upon the shoulder of your somnambulant mind and jostle, saying softly and firmly as you do, it's time, love. This time, now, wake and engage. If not now, then when? When why? When you? When this? When try? Not everybody knows more than you, and there are plenty who know less. Wake and take the closest door, which may be the wrong door, but will lead to more doors. Don't worry. You must wake and slip and fall and get up. You must splash water on your face and look in the mirror, saying, Let's go, you. Just let's. Come on. The step, the stride, the leap. Fully alert, fully awake, fully plugged into the beeping machine of the universe. The now. The awakened state. It's understandable, the free state. There is a world outside and the world is angry. It snarls and growls and knits its brows. The world is set on spinning off the table and onto the floor to smash all the crockery and expensive heirlooms of our heritage. It is pulsing and petulant, throbbing and watching as you shrivel in your inert poise, a mind dumb and dull and with our temperature dial set well below zero. I was fine until you got here, says world. Don't put yourself on ice. Wake up. Even the worm, frozen and static for far too long, wakes and immediately gets down to the business of wriggling. No delay, no time to waste. Fleeting, brief and well alive. Let the worm be your guide, spiritual, intellectual and instinctual. Reject your slowed metabolism. Shuck the ice and frost and hard purchase of the symbiosis psychosis and rise from the bed to cheer your own dream. I wake, therefore I am. Frozen in time, but not out of mind. Of mind, in mind, sound mind, the gap. All life is winter. A long and bitter wind blows in, a jacket stuffed with self-hate and loathing. There's never enough wood and the coals burn down and your boots wear out while the crack under the door lets all threats in. All life is winter, but not all the time. Oh yes. Put a log on your fire and stoke the coals in your slippers and your gown. Wipe the sleep of disconnection from your eyes. Wake up and look at the time change and the mood swings and the inevitable culture wars that rage too long and idiotically. Step into the battle of it. Awake. Swing arms, throw elbows, and be just like the worm, waking from its suspended animation to produce, with furious intensity, newborn work and thought. In winter's gaps, there can be spring, summer, and fall. All gaps to fill, all filled with life, with waking. Who art in heaven, father? No one arts in heaven, child. Dead musicians aren't jamming there just because you imagine them to be. Do your art on earth, Mozart yells from behind that cloud, floating off to join Hendrix and Herring in the nothing, of nothing, by nothing, for no one. Time, no time, all time. We gave it this name. We added marks to a line to signify its passing. We invented ways to monitor it as we moved from born to die. A construct, an invention. It flashes by and is gone for one while continuing for another, for now, relentless. You cannot sleep through this. Wake up! You must melt your own ice. You must hold a hairdryer to your motivation, to your soul, to your heart, and thaw your inertia. Wake up. Permafrost is permalost. We are all worms on our way to becoming worm food. We live, we die, and somewhere in there, we wriggle. Are you awake yet? And there you have it. Today's episode. There were actually two footnotes in this. Uh, one was to try to explain away why I had included Keith Herring's name in the musicians hanging out. Well, I think it's because musicians hang out with artists. They just do. That's been going on for as long as time has. Uh, and the second one was when I did the original Call to Arms, I included quadrupeds in there. And you might think, well, wait a minute, Janine, humans are bipeds. Yes, but we start out crawling. So that's why that's the way it is. It was subtle, and I think sometimes I'm too subtle. So anyway, I hope you'll come back for more of these episodes because the more of them you consume, the better your odds at being inspired to get out there and make something of your own. If you enjoyed this ramble, please follow the podcast so that you never miss an episode. But for now, I'll leave you with this. Love what you love, and I'll see you out there making stuff. <laughs>